belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of the universe and all within. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to also echo the words of uh, Brother Farid in extending a special welcome to our deaf brothers and sisters. Most of them are students in the class we have that runs twice a month at Master Toronto. And Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, you have to deal with the deaf brothers and sisters to learn so many things that will open your eyes. In this, Allah has blessed me with when I began teaching this class maybe three or four years ago at Masjid Toronto. So, brothers and sisters of the deaf community, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the IIT once again. Uh, brothers and sisters, it seems like it's been a while that I have used this microphone. And I hope that inshallah for the next 20 or 25 minutes, I will be able to take your mind off whatever hunger or thirst you may experience or may feel right now. Anyone here is hungry? Who's not hungry? Nobody's hungry? So Allah, you must be eating during the day. Alright, it's what? Almost 16 or 17 hours now we've been fasting, so if you haven't eaten since the whole time, you should be a little bit hungry. But the trick is not to let the hunger become the obsession of the mind. Because Ramadan, and fasting in particular with Ramadan, is intended to train us to control the mind, to control the thoughts and ideas, the things we think about, and by extension, our desires. But nevertheless, brothers and sisters, my topic today is another Ramadan, another opportunity. First of all, I want to explore with you what the word opportunity means. It has been defined by the Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary as a favorable juncture of circumstances. That is a favorable coming together of circumstances. And the second definition in the same online dictionary is that an opportunity is a good chance for advancement or progress. A good chance for advancement or progress. And brothers and sisters, Allah the Exalted has given us in Ramadan a great opportunity or a good chance for advancement and progress. But to really appreciate brothers and sisters the value and the blessings of Ramadan and what it can do for you and I or should do for you and I, we need to understand that Allah the Exalted is always present. He's always accessible. He never goes into hiding or seclusion and only comes out in Ramadan. No, he is always present every day of the year. So every day of the year, a person is able and can access God Almighty. However, Allah be exalted has also chosen special at uh, certain times and certain places for special blessings. And this is to give you and I that opportunity, remember that chance for advancement or progress, He has given it to us out of His grace and benevolence. He doesn't need to. But out of His grace and His benevolence and His care and His love for us, Allah be exalted has given us opportunities or times and places where in a short time, in a short span of time, we can achieve great blessings and great mercies. Let me give you a couple of examples. 
We know that in prayer in Mecca at Al Masjid Al Haram at the Kaaba is 100,000 times better than anywhere else. So Allah has selected that place for this special blessing. In prayer at the Kaaba is 100,000 times better than anywhere else. And that's why all of us, we yearn and we long to go to Mecca to pray at the Kaaba. A prayer at the Prophet's mosque in Medina is a thousand times better than anywhere else. Again, that's a special place. And we all, as Muslims, also yearn and hope to go there. A prayer in Al Masjid al Aqsa in Jerusalem is 500 times better than anywhere else. It's a special place. Allah has also selected the day of Arafah for very special blessings. It is quite interesting, brothers and sisters, that Abu Hajj, that place known as Arafah, has absolutely no significance. It is not even in the city limits of Mecca, so it's not within the heart of the sanctuary. It's outside of that. So Arab Hajj, it is an ordinary place. But on the ninth day of Mul Hijjah, that is the best place to be for the whole year. The great scholar of Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, when he was asked about which day is the best day in the year, he said, the best day of the year in terms of daylight hours is the day of Arafah. There is no other day in the year, including the daytime of Ramadan, better than the day of Arafah. And the best night of the year in terms of nighttime hours after sunset is Laylatul Qadr, which is found only in Ramadan. Of all the nights in the year, including the night of the day of Arafah, the Laylatul Qadr is the best night. And thus, this Ramadan that we're experiencing right now, brothers and sisters, is indeed another opportunity, another chance for advancement and progress. But an opportunity for what? What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to achieve? Well, there are two things. The first is, it is an opportunity for you and I to do what we should have done or what we should be doing, but we have not done and we are not doing. That's what it is. An opportunity for you and I to do the things that we ought to be doing. If, if we were to know, brothers and sisters, if we were to know or to be informed that the, at the end of this Ramadan we will die, what is it would you and I do right now? What would we do right now? We know that we will die at the end of Ramadan this year. May Allah forbid. What would we be doing right now? What change would we make? What would we do differently? Well, this Ramadan is the, is the opportunity to do those very things you and I would do if we knew we would die at the end of this month. Remember, that an opportunity is an amount of time or a situation in which something can be done. So in this Ramadan, it can be done. And this is also a definition given by the Web Merriam Webster Dictionary Online. So for many of us brothers and sisters, this Ramadan is an opportunity for us to give in charity. Or perhaps to give more in charity, because we're already giving in charity. Or to volunteer. We always need volunteer here at the IIT. Right now, as we're sitting here, there are brothers and sisters outside who are, mashallah, packaging the dinner that we will hopefully enjoy after Salat al Maghrib. We we'll always need uh, volunteers to help with the parking and, and uh, the show patrol. Yes, we have a new position now, a shoe patrol. Uh, senior uh, troopers, so patrol officers, no shoes on the ground. So it's an opportunity for us to volunteer. 
If we knew we will die at the end of the month, what would we do now? Would we volunteer more? It's an opportunity for, 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 for some to quit smoking, or to watch less television, or to quit lying, to give up bad mind, to share with others, and, not, and stop being so self-centered. For others, it might be an opportunity to play less computer and video games. And yes, I'm talking to these young boys in front of me. Less computer and video games. Or to cut back on wasting. Especially food, and especially in this month of fasting. And let me take a moment here, brothers and sisters, to remind myself and all of you that I know we're all well aware of the fact that Allah the Exalted has prohibited wasting. But nevertheless, the sad reality we live is that often we waste, especially food and especially in Ramadan. And so I hope that each one of us here will take responsibility. If each one of us takes that responsibility at a personal level, then we can do an amazing job of eliminating wasting period. So take only as much as you can eat. I know when you're hungry, very hungry, you think you can eat the world of food. But as you start eating, you realize you can't. So remember, Ramadan is an exercise in controlling our desires and our thoughts. So let us not allow our thoughts or the desire we feel, the hunger we feel, get the better of us. We should be in control of the desires and the thoughts. We should not be under the control of our desires and thoughts. So perhaps this is an opportunity for us to stop our wasting, eliminate our wasting, especially in this month, and especially given the fact that there are many people in our world today, even in our own city, who do not have enough to eat. How can we waste food, brothers and sisters, when there are brothers and sisters in our city in Toronto, let alone places like Syria, and Afghanistan, and Palestine, and many other countries that are starving, that are living without food as a lifestyle, For some, this is an opportunity to desist from using indecent language, foul language. For others, this Ramadan is an opportunity to read and to study the Quran, and perhaps to listen to, uh, to less music. I hope when I see the brothers and sisters with these headphones walking around, that it is Quran you are listening to. And it is not music. Because it is the Quran that will benefit us brothers and sisters. So it's an opportunity. But you and I have to, will, have, to have the will and desire to make use of the opportunity. So perhaps it's an opportunity for some of us to read more Quran, to listen to more Quran, and to listen to less music. Or, it's an opportunity for some of us to perform our sunnah prayers before the far prayers and after the far prayers. Despite the fact that the sunnah is not compulsory, brothers and sisters, we should not make it a habit and a lifestyle to skip the sunnah prayers. They are important. We cannot make them compulsory, of course. We can't do that, but they are still important. And so. If we're not doing them, this is the time, this is the best time perhaps to resolve, to start doing the sunnah prayers. Perhaps speak two or three prayers. And pray the sunnah of these three or two or three prayers. And then when next Ramadan comes, add the other two. So that we progress. Remember the definition of Opportunity is a chance for what? 
for advancement or progress. So perhaps it's an opportunity and a chance for you and I to perform our sunnah prayers before and after the far prayers. Or it's an opportunity for us to be more kind and courteous. Or to be more tolerant and compassionate to others. Or to be more obedient to our parents. More kind to our parents. To listen to our parents. And perhaps for all of us, it is an opportunity to nurture a strong connection and bond with our Creator, the Exalted, and so on. So this Ramadan, brothers and sisters, is indeed an opportunity for each one of us to quit or to change some of the bad habits we may have and develop good new ones. An opportunity to train ourselves to be less attached to this material, enjoyable, but temporary life and prepare for the everlasting life of bliss and happiness in the hereafter. An opportunity, brothers and sisters, for us to achieve the blessings, the grace, the forgiveness, and the mercy of Allah the Exalted that cannot be attained at any other time. So it's an opportunity for us to make changes in our own personal lives so that we can progress from point A to point B, coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is also an opportunity for us to attain and to achieve the grace and the mercy and the blessings and the forgiveness of Allah that we cannot and may not be able to attain at other times. And some of these blessings is what I would like to also share with you before I close. Now, before I share with you this first hadith, I want to ask all of you, when you open your door for someone, what exactly does it mean? I mean, have some time, so tell me, what, give me some answers. Yes, sisters, you say to someone, my door is always open for you. What does that mean? Brothers, what does it mean? You don't know? Sorry, what does it mean? You're welcome. Not only that, brothers and sisters, but when you say to somebody, unless you're you know, not being sincere, when you say to somebody, my door is always open for you, you're not just telling the person that he or she is always welcome, but what you also are telling the person is that, look, I am also happy with every time you visit me. I'm happy with your visit, with your presence. All right. Now what if you tell somebody, or what if you close your door to somebody? What does that mean? What does it mean now? You close your door. Yes, brothers, go. You are not welcome. You are not welcome. Exactly. Ahsan. Can you stand up, please? Stand up, stand up. Can you see this little brother coming? <laughs> All the grown brothers and sisters, maybe you can learn from him. <laughs> All right, he knows. When you close your door, you're not welcome. That's what you're saying to the person. Not only that, you're also telling the person, look, I am not happy with your visit. I don't want you to come around. Your presence doesn't bring me happiness. Well, bear this in mind, brothers and sisters. Because in this hadith that Al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah relates it to Sahih, the Prophet wasalam, said, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانَ When Ramadan comes, which means out of Ramadan, these blessings are not to be achieved. They are not there. But they are there in Ramadan. When Ramadan comes, فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ The doors of paradise are open. Why do you think, brothers and sisters, Allah the Exalted opens the doors of Jannah in Ramadan? Why does He open the doors? You have just answered the question of what opening the door to someone means. So it is as if Allah the Exalted is saying to all of us, for people, welcome to paradise. And I am happy that you want to come to paradise. Your presence in paradise is what will please me. 
This is what Allah is saying to us by opening up the doors of paradise. Welcome all people to paradise in this month of Ramadan. But only if we want it badly enough to strive for. In addition to that, the Prophet said, and the doors of the, of the hellfire are closed. Again, why does Allah the exalted close the doors of the hellfire? You have just told me what closing the doors means to someone. And so it is as if Allah the exalted does not want us in, in, in the hellfire. That's why He has closed the doors. We're not welcome there. And he's not happy with us being there. And in any case, if the doors are closed, you can't get it, even if you want you to. So Ramadan is the time to do good deeds. If we can't do good deeds in this month, brothers and sisters, I don't know when we will find that opportunity. Because the hadith continues. In the third blessing of this month that is mentioned in this hadith, the Prophet said, وَسُلْزِلَةِ الشَّيَاطِينَ The devils among the jinn are changed. So the hadith, the whole hadith is, is إِذَا جَاءَ رَأَنَامْ فُتِحَتْ أَرْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَأُغْلِقَتْ أَرْوَابُ النَّارِ وَسُلْزِلَةِ الشَّيَاطِينَ When the month of Ramadan comes, the doors of paradise are open, the doors of the hellfire are closed, and the devils are changed. But the devils here refers to the devils among the jinn. The interesting issue here though is why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan chains the jinns? So he takes them out of the picture. In other words, brothers and sisters, Shaitan, Iblis, and his army of jinn are not able to whisper thoughts and ideas to us in Ramadan. So why? Well, to understand this, we must understand that as humans, there are three forces of evil we have to contend with every single day, except of course in Ramadan. And these three are, number one, the devils among the jinn. They whisper all kinds of thoughts and ideas. They tempt us. And sadly, often we fall prey to their temptation. Then, they are the devils among human beings. Yes, they are devils among human beings. People who encourage us to do wrong things. People who mock us for doing the right thing. And often, this influence is indirect. So when you see advertisements that entices people, that entice people to do what is wrong, this is coming from the devils of all human beings. And the third force of evil is our own desires, our own bad habits. Now, in Ramadan, while fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to learn to control ourselves, to control our desires. So to help us win this battle, or be successful in this training, what he does is he takes away that force of evil, the devils among the jinn, so that all we're left with in Ramadan to contend or to struggle against are two, devils among humans and our own bad habits and desires. Now you may wonder, why didn't Allah also take out the devils among humans? Well, the reason is, brothers and sisters, is that the negative influence from human beings is an external one. And because it is external, it is easier to recognize and resist. See, when somebody tells you or encourages you to do what is wrong, because it's coming from outside, it's much easier to recognize that it's wrong. Although even then, sometimes we give in. But the negative influence of the jinn is much harder to realize and recognize and therefore resist. Because they don't come as an outside or an external entity. They come from within. 
This is why they do was was. They whisper into our minds thoughts and ideas. We don't even know that these are ideas from Shaitan. We think they're all our, th our own thoughts and ideas. And every human being, brothers and sisters, would like to think that his or her thoughts are good thoughts. And so it's harder to resist the temptations and the whisperings that come as part of our thought process. And this is why Allah takes them out. Because Allah wants us to recognize our own bad habits, our own desires for what they are. And so in Ramadan, while fasting, when Allah takes away the, the, the jinn, the force of evil and influence from the jinn, it is much easier for you and I to recognize our own bad habits. And now that I can see my own bad habits, brothers and sisters, and acknowledge them, perhaps it would be easier now for me to begin to do something about them. Because as we know very well, brothers and sisters, the secret in fixing anything is what? What is it? What is the secret in fixing anything? No? When do you fix something? When, not for how, yes? When do you fix anything? You, when it's, it's broken, exactly. Do you fix what's not broken? No, you fix what is broken. And this is, this is really the essence here. Allah wants us to see our own faults, our own bad habits. So he takes away the jinn. So now I can't blame the jinn. I can't blame shaitan for whispering thoughts into my mind. I cannot blame shaitan for tempting me. My own bad habits, this is who I am. And so the secret in changing anything or fixing anything is to first recognize that there is a problem or to recognize that, this, that something needs changing. And hopefully after that, then we will change it or we will fix it. Well, until you can acknowledge it needs fixing, brothers and sisters, you will never fix it, but it is simple. And so the hope or the objective is that in Ramadan, while we're fasting, and Allah has taken away the influence of the jinn, the Iblis and his army of jinn, that we can recognize our bad habits and begin to change them, inshallah. To unlearn them. And to learn good new ones. And we do this every day. Not just one, one, one day and that's it. We do it every day for 30 days or 29 days. It is this practice and repetition that is important to teach us, to get us into the habit of doing good things. In addition to that, brothers and sisters, fasting, especially in Ramadan, is a unique act of worship. It's a unique ibadah, unlike all other ibadah. The Prophet والسلام, in a hadith in Sahih al Bukhari, he said that Allah the Exalted said, and this is a hadith Qudsi, all the deeds of the human being are for himself except fasting, which is for me, and I will give the reward for it. Now this statement is quite interesting, because we are taught all our lives as Muslims, that everything we do, we should do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, aren't we? Isn't that what we're taught every time we listen to a speech or a khutbah? That whatever we should do, we should do it for the pleasure of Allah. Why then does Allah say in this hadith that all the actions of the human being are for himself? Except fasting which is for me and I will reward it. Why did he exclude the other ibadah, salah and zakat and hajj and everything else? Why this special mention of fasting? Well, there are two reasons. The first is fasting prevents indulging in desires and pleasures of the self while the other ibadat do not prevent them. When we pray, we're not preventing ourselves from indulgence in any desires or pleasures. Of course, while praying we cannot eat. 
What was your dumb brain which lasts only a few minutes? You can eat. But for fasting, you cannot eat for an extended period of time. So it is de depriving the self of indulging in its pleasures and desires. This is what is special about fasting. This is why, or one of the two reasons why in the Hadith al Qudsi, Allah the Exalted said, there all the actions are for us except fasting. That's for him, he will reward him. Because here, we are preventing and restricting ourselves from enjoying pleasures for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not eating and drinking. We become hungry and thirsty. And yet, we control the urge to eat and drink. We force ourselves not to focus on the hunger and thirst, but to, to think of other things, good things, so that we don't feel the hunger and thirst. And likewise, for those of course who are married, they give up spousal relations, intimate relations, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second reason why fasting was given the special mention that's mentioned by the scholars is that fasting is a secret. Al Imam al Qurtubi, Allah in his tafsir, he said that fasting is a secret between a person and his Lord. And it is not apparent to anyone except Allah the Creator. You see, brothers and sisters, when we pray, others can see us. It is apparent. If I were to give in charity and you are around, you can see me giving in charity. If I go for Hajj, you may go to the airport to, you know, bid me farewell. But when we fast, who knows? The person who is fasting, you cannot tell the person is fasting. There are no visible signs. This is why the scholars say that fasting is a secret between the person and his Lord. And it is not known to anyone but the Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is being done specifically for him. But the other acts of worship, the other ibadat are apparent and known to those around. So a person may do them in order to show off or impress, not necessarily to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fasting, brothers and sisters, which is obligatory, is only in the month of Ramadan. And it is a special act of worship as we've seen. The third grace and benevolence, the benevolence of Allah that we can achieve in this blessed month. And so it's another opportunity for us is that the reward of good deeds is multiplied by 10 times. The reward of good deeds is multiplied by 10 times. Now I know all of us like bargains. Anyone who doesn't like a bargain, you don't like bargains, two for one, 50% off, how about 10 for 1, brothers and sisters? Have you seen any store that offered you this? You have never seen that. And you will never see it. The only one who was offered that is Allah the Exalted. The Prophet والسلام, in this hadith in Sahih al Bukhari, and it's another hadith Qudsi, he said that Allah the Exalted said about the fasting person, He has left his food and desires for my sake. The fast is for me. And I will give the reward for it. And the reward of good deeds is multiplied ten times. This is the hadith of some of you The reward is multiplied by ten times. The fourth benefit for us brothers and sisters, an opportunity for us to achieve, is forgiveness of our sins. Forgiveness of our sins through three things. The first is fasting itself. The Prophet said, Man sama Ramadan iman and wahtisaban, wufiradahu ma taqaddama min them. Whoever fasts in Ramadan with sincere devotion and hoping for a reward from Allah will have all his or her previous sins forgiven. So through fasting. But also through praying during the night of Ramadan. We call it Taraweeh prayers. Yes. It's a natural prayer. But it has tremendous blessings. And it is only performed in Ramadan. Taraweeh. You know, brothers and sisters, even the fast we make up for Ramadan that we have missed after Ramadan, we simply fast the day. We do not pray Taraweeh. 
This is a special Nafal prayer in, in Ramadan. And about the Tarawih prayer, the Prophet ﷺ said in the Hadith in Sahih al Bukhari, "Man qama Ramadan iman al wahtisaba, wufir Allahu ma taqaddama min dhamm." Whoever prays in the nights of Ramadan, the praying in the nights is Tarawih or Tahajjud as well. Any extra voluntary prayers you do in the night time of Ramadan after Salat al Isha and before Salat al Fajr. Whoever prays in the nights of Ramadan with sincere devotion and hoping for a reward from Allah will have all his or her previous sins forgiven. What better bargain, brothers and sisters? It is only 30 nights at most, or 29 at least. But this is the reward. This is the bargain. And the third is praying in light of the Praying in the night of power which is one of the odd nights in the last ten nights of Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ Whoever prays in the night of Qadr, in the night of power, إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا With sincere devotion and hoping for a reward from Allah will have all his or her previous sins forgiven. So now that we know, brothers and sisters, what we should be doing in Ramadan, let us just do it before it is too late. I am sure all of us or most of us know someone who was with us last Ramadan in 2014. And today in this Ramadan, they are not with us. They have passed away. Or you may have known someone who, MashaAllah, used to come to the masjid during last Ramadan. But this Ramadan, they are so ill, they cannot come to the masjid. We have great blessings, brothers and sisters. We have the health and the strength. So we should make use of it before it's too late. This opportunity to come to the masjid, the opportunity to fast, to come to the masjid for taraweeh, to pray at Miyam, to pray in the night of Qawr. This opportunity will be taken away from us at some point in time. And thus the smart person, the intelligent person, is the one who seizes the opportunity that will enable him or her to achieve the objective while the wretched person, the loser, is the one who falls short of the objective and then cries over these missed opportunities. Oh, I wish I had done that. Oh, if only I had done that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us brothers and sisters. May He open our hearts and our minds so that we can understand this wonderful message is revealed from mankind and may He inspire us all to live by this message. May Allah be exalted, help us and guide us to make good use of this opportunity He has blessed us with so that we can make the changes and do the things that will strengthen our connection with our Creator so that we can do the things that will bring us closer to our Creator. And may He accept from us our fasting, our prayers, our du'as, and all our good deeds. And may He forgive for us our mistakes and our shortcomings. أَطُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِقَلَبُهُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ